Hey guys, 7th here, back with another digital dump. Today we're looking at Mad Age and this guy. This is a Steam release. It's available for 10 bucks. And it basically incorporates various elements from 8 and 16-bit puzzle action titles. i uh, give you some examples. It takes a little bit from Bomberman, takes a little bit from The Adventures of Lolo, and a few others you'll notice along the way. It's a pretty simple premise. It's a steampunk vibe going on here. Basically, you live in a steampunk era, and these evil scientists have developed steam-powered robots with the intentions of taking over the world, and they're slowly stealing technology left and right. So it's your mission to infiltrate and steal back all the technology and destroy all these robots. You do this by moving blocks around, grabbing keys, opening doors, and blowing up robots with bombs. But it's not as easy as it sounds because of the robots. As you can see, their AI is kind of odd. The patterns don't necessarily rely on any kind of real consistency because of the fact that when you get within a certain range of them, they instantly change their behaviors. And there's a very finite amount of room between how close you can get to them versus when they lose interest in you and walk away. So that can make the timing of when you place your bombs rather challenging in the later levels. You also get in to levels where there's traps and other things that you have to avoid and it just kind of adds to the complexity as it goes along like any good puzzler will. The music is amazing. It's straight out of like the 16-bit and even going into the early 32-bit era. Uh, the graphics the same. I mean these graphics would look perfectly at home on a Super Nintendo system. The gameplay is tight and responsive. It comes built in with support for Xbox 360, but we played around with it and got it working on a DualShock 4. Had no issues there. Uh, no glitches, no crashes, nothing like that. Game runs very stable, and it's a lot of fun to play. And of course, you are going to be uh, accidentally misgaging where those bombs need to go and uh, occasionally getting killed by a robot, but that's the way you progress. That's the way you learn. Eventually, you get the hang of where you need to be, and uh, it'll become second nature for you after a certain period of time. Now, if there's anything at all that I could possibly fault this game on, uh, aside from the fact that there is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to figuring out where you need to be in regards to the robots and their wacky AI, it would be that once you've beat the game, once you've finished the levels, you finish the levels. There's not a whole lot of replayability there because by that point, you know how to get through each level, you know where you need to be, where you need to put it, and there is a little bit of repetition there because there's only so many ways that you can blow up a robot, there's only so many ways that you can avoid the same types of traps. You get what I'm saying. But there are three large areas that each have multiple levels. You have the cave zone, which is what you're looking at here. You have the arctic zone, which of course is covered in ice. And then you have the castle zone. And like I say, each zone has numerous levels, new types of traps, and things to overcome. In short, you get a lot of bang for your 10 bucks. It's just not something that you're going to be constantly going back and revisiting once you've completed it. It could have done possibly better with, say, uh, some kind of a procedural generated mode. Like maybe a, an arcade crash mode where it's just randomly creating generated levels and maybe you're on a timer so it only gives you a certain amount of time to get from one level to the next. That would have kept it fresh for a lot longer. But still, again, for $10, you're getting a lot for your buck. And you're getting a great, fun little game. Overall, I think this project worked out well. I think that the game is absolutely what the developers set out to create. 
I think they succeeded in what they were attempting to do. If you have a Steam membership and you like retro style games like this, by all means, give it a try. Mad Age and this guy gets a 6 out of 7.